So originally I was gonna make a video about all the ways that you can make money by learning how to code. After I did a little bit of research on the topic, I realized that there are a ton of YouTubers out there that have already made these videos pretty much all saying the same thing. So I wanna talk about some of those things that they mention in their videos instead of just selling you the pipe dream that all of this stuff will be really easy just because you learn how to print Hello World. I'm gonna try to keep it real and let you know some of the pitfalls and struggles that you might face with these methods that a lot of people are mentioning that can make you money by learning how to code or becoming a programmer. The main reason why a lot of people wanna learn how to code is because they wanna get a job as a software developer. And while it seems like an awesome job where you have kombucha on tap and you get to hang out with your hipster colleagues in your dog-friendly office. In Pakistan, dogs are not pets. Okay, they're vicious beasts and they chase you down the street and they bite you. And even though you might have an awesome break room with ping pong tables and video games with endless beverages to choose from, the other thing that will be endless is the features that you'll be implementing and the bugs you'll be fixing and the code that you'll be pushing on a daily basis. And yes, it's true. There are plenty of software engineering jobs with high paying salaries and great benefits. But the truth is that this is a really hard job and burnout is a real thing that many developers go through. There's a reason why why the average tenure of a developer at a regular company is usually like two years and fan companies, developers really only stick around for about three years. The fact that finding a new job is usually the best way to get a raise might play into those numbers. What are you looking for a raise? Get out. But there's also a lot of other things that go into that. And like I mentioned, burnout is real. And people burn out at this job a lot. It can be demanding at times, you have deadlines and you have a lot of stuff that People leave out of these day in the life videos that can be very stressful and that's why software developers get paid so much. So even though a lot of us tech influencers try to make this job to be super sexy because we have nice offices and we make a ton of money doing it, it's not to say that it's an easy job and it's gonna be an easy $100,000 a year. And when you're first starting out, you're gonna be lucky to make 50, 60, maybe $70,000 a year. Right now I have five years of experience and I won't even consider a job that pays less than 120 a year. But the truth is my first job paid me $50,000 a year. While getting a programming job is possible and learning how to code can get you there. It's gonna take you a while to make the big money that everyone always talks about. And it's gonna be a grind. Even after you get your first job, you're gonna to have to work your way up to that salary. You have to deal with a lot of corporate bullshit. You have to deal with a lot of nonsense that people don't wanna deal with. And working a desk job and being told what you need to do all day and having to meet deadlines, having to deal with middle management, having to deal with business and just everything that goes into being a developer that doesn't have to do with code can kind of wear on you after a while. And depending on your office politics and your company culture, it can be toxic in most places. And from what I've noticed, a lot of companies are like that. Smaller companies and larger companies alike, they all have their own level of toxicity. And with working from home, which is one of the big benefits that many people always highlight about software development jobs, that's a little bit easier. While this is a great job that you can have remote benefits for or a few work from home days, the truth is most companies still wanna keep us in the office. And many of those perks that they try to highlight aren't that great because really at the end of the day, you're sitting in front of your computer, you're writing code, dealing with office work. And it's not as fun and exciting as so many people try to make it out to be on social media. There's a lot of stuff that people don't tell you when they're highlighting all the perks and benefits and pay of this job. So keep that in mind because even though it looks awesome on social media, it doesn't necessarily mean that this job is as cool as so many people make it out to be. If you don't like that kind of thing, a programming job might not be the best option for you. But if you're like, I don't want a job, that's not why I'm learning how to code. I want to learn how to code to be a freelancer. I want to make my own schedule. I want to be my own boss. I want to be a digital nomad and travel the world while I write code and pick up jobs here and there that I want to work and, and you know, just live that kind of life and be free from the corporate world and just dictate my own success by working on freelance projects with clients that I choose to work with. All right, let's talk about freelance. Let's talk about how difficult it actually is to start as a freelancer. Now, if you've got some experience and you've been doing software development for a while now, particularly web dev or even mobile apps and stuff like that, if you have some experience doing those things, then getting freelance work or starting out as a freelancer might be a little bit easier for you. Because of course, people are probably more likely to hire you just because you do have experience. You understand the process, you know how to deliver stuff, and you're probably gonna be a better option than someone who doesn't. Now, let's say you're that someone who doesn't have any experience at all, and you're just learning how to code now, and you wanna become a freelancer. You can make money as a freelancer. 
The problem is, is that becoming a freelancer is really, really hard. Even if you do have a ton of experience as a professional developer, like me, I have almost five years of experience now as a professional web developer, and I have a little bit of freelance experience. With that said, if I tried to go out and start freelancing right now, I'm starting from scratch. I, I don't have any clients. I might have a few people that I could reach out to, but the truth is that I, I don't know anyone that will need my services right away. So then what do I have to do? I have to go out and find clients. A lot of people will tell you that the best way to find your first clients is locally. You go to your local mom and pop shop, you go to the bakery, you go to the gym, you go, you go to all these places in your neighborhood or in your town and you start asking them if they need websites or if they need apps, if they need social media stuff, if they need anything that you might be technically savvy enough to help them out with. Now, that's a grind all on its own. And if you're like me, who is kind of an introvert and you hate talking to people and you don't really want to go out and shake hands and kiss babies, you can reach out to your network if you have one, former colleagues, or if you have a little bit of a social media following. If, if you know anyone, you can just start spreading the word and building websites and stuff for friends and family. And hopefully that will give you a little bit of a freelance portfolio that then you can actually start getting real work from or those people that you help out and work for free or work for you know really cheap they they do a little bit of word of mouth for you and then you start getting some gigs but let's say you don't have that then you're stuck going to sites like upwork fiverr freelancer.com and all those other freelancing websites that there are out there and you are in a sea of applicants you are going to be racing to the bottom for almost every job that you apply for and if you don't have a portfolio, and if you're not willing to work for practically free until you build that portfolio, you're probably not gonna get a call back from someone. And then once you do have a portfolio and, and you've gotten a little bit of work, you're still competing with so many people out there. And you're also competing with people from different countries who, who don't need to make as much money as you do to survive. So a lot of the work that you'll find, at least early on, is gonna be pretty crappy work and it's not gonna pay a lot. Now, let's say you grind it out and you have enough savings to do this for a while or you're in a position where you don't need the money right away and you and you put in the work for six months or a year and you build up your clientele and you have some local business and you've got business online. Freelancers still live pretty hand to mouth until they're making enough money to where that's not an issue. And that can take years. Just like with the people that learn how to code and get a job in three months, there's freelancers out there who do it and in six months are making a ton of money and living the dream life. But those aren't the majority, those are the minority. Most people are gonna be working pretty hard. I've known a lot of people who have been freelance web developers and have been freelance coders. And a lot of them, kind of go back to a day job because it can be very stressful living hand to mouth like that. It can be really hard dealing with clients because that whole dream of being able to pick and choose who you work with, yeah, you might have that freedom, but at the end of the day, if you're gonna have someone who's gonna pay you good money to do something and you want that business and you need that business because if you don't take that job, you're not gonna be able to pay your bills for that month, you're gonna have to eat shit and you're gonna have to deal with the clients personally. Cause now you're not just dealing with business and middle management, now you're dealing with clients directly. And anyone who's dealt with clients before directly will tell you that clients can be a big pain in the ass and they can be nitpicky and they can ask you for so much extra stuff and then they try to haggle you on the price and then they try to lowball you or they try not to pay you and it's just, it's a lot of trouble being a freelancer. And if you come into this hearing people talk about how awesome it is to learn how to code and how you can make money as a freelancer and live the dream life of being your own boss, remember that a lot of those people that are telling you that you can be a freelancer doing this have never been freelancers themselves. So if your goal is to be a freelancer, make sure that you're getting your information from people who have actually done it because there's plenty of people out there on YouTube and on social media that will try to sell you that dream and have never done it themselves. Telling people that they can make money makes you a lot of money on the internet. Let's move on to the next thing. So let's talk about startups, SaaS products, mobile apps, the next social media platform that's gonna take the world by storm. Those are all things that people tell you that you can build. It feels like every single software developer I know has some app that they built or some great idea that they started that they are either working on or are no longer working on because they gave it up. 
The truth about building the next big startup is that startups are highly competitive, especially if you're talking about like hyper growth startups. Of course, you can build a small app idea that maybe solves a problem for you and eventually it grows into something and you get a few users or a few hundred or thousand users and it makes you a nice little bit of money. But if you think you're gonna build the next big unicorn startup, the truth is that there's hundreds of thousands of people out there that are working on those same kind of ideas. Probably the same exact idea that you already have, someone is currently building something for that. And when it comes to creating a startup, the best approach that you can have is to not really care about making money right away because you probably won't make any money right away. It's totally possible. But if you go into it thinking like, I'm gonna make this awesome application that everyone's gonna wanna use, the truth is that there's probably not that many people that need whatever you're building, and there's more of a chance that someone has already built something better. Not trying to be discouraging here. I just want to keep it real when it comes to these things that so many people are telling you are like cool, great, easy, awesome ways to make money with programming. It, these things aren't easy. None of it is easy. The truth is that it takes a long time, just like with everything else I'm mentioning in this video. I'm guilty of making videos where I highlight all the cool stuff you can do by learning how to code. And yes, it is cool that you can build your own startup, but it's also super hard and it's not that easy to make money with a startup. Let's talk a little bit about game dev. Similar to startups, a lot of game development starts as a passion project, but many people get into software or want to learn how to code because they want to be game developers. Because who doesn't, right? I'm, I'm a gamer, I, I played so many video games, and the thought of building a game has crossed my mind. The truth is that building a game on your own is really, really difficult. And working as a game developer is one of the worst development jobs I've heard of having. Uh, at least if you're working for like a big company, corporations and companies kind of exploit your passion because they know that a lot of game developers are passionate and they want to exploit that because if you work for your passion, you're more likely to work longer hours for less pay. So if you wanna get a job as a game developer, I would consider maybe another area of software development. I know there's gonna be some people that aren't gonna to wanna to hear that, but it's kind of the truth. If you wanna create your own video game or your own mobile game or a mod for a video game that you already play, like those things are all great as hobbies and side projects. But if you want to get into this because you want to create your own game that's gonna make you a ton of money, man, it's hard. It's harder than building a startup. It's, it's probably the hardest path that you can take is to try to become like an indie game developer or the next Wordle or, you know, Flap Happy bird developer. There's just so many people doing that stuff. There's just so much crap out there. And if you're coming into this because you really think that you're gonna be that much better than everyone out there, then, then shit, don't let me stop you. Like, I, I will never wanna be the person that steps in the way of your dreams. But if you go into it to make money from creating a video game, it's probably not gonna happen. You're gonna have to put hours and hours and hours of work into it. And if you're doing it on your own, the chances of you getting that game off the ground and getting it released and making money off of it, man, try something else. Do work on it as a side project and build it up just like you would a startup. And hopefully maybe one day it gets enough players to where you can focus on it full time and maybe get funding and hire more people to help you grow it. But don't think that you're gonna make a ton of money being a game developer because it just might not happen. The last thing I wanna talk about is content creation, which is a path that I have taken just like I learned to code, I went down the path of creating content based around software development. Although I am not doing tutorials, I am more of a motivational programming life coach. I couldn't have given myself a cringier title than that. But the truth is that you can make money with content and I, I'm living proof of it. I, I share my numbers. I am as transparent as I can be with my audience. I enjoy doing that and I like to show people that you can do these things. Just how I share my story about how I became a software developer, I like sharing my numbers on the stuff I'm doing with content. You can make money with content. In January, I made almost five grand. That doesn't include my blog. That doesn't include my affiliate sales. Just off of YouTube ads alone, I made like 4,800 bucks, I think it was. That was my biggest month ever. 
I mean, the last few months have been the biggest months I've ever had on YouTube and it's the most money I've made with content ever. I have almost 200 videos uploaded on YouTube and I've been making content for the last two years now. If you're approaching learning how to code and you're getting into content, then a blog that you talk about coding in, which would be content that you can create from learning how to code, would be an approach that you can take and that's why I mentioned it in this video, even though my blog doesn't have to do with programming. Well, my second blog, does, but my first blog that's actually making me money doesn't. It's it's a, it's an off topic blog, but you know, it, it's on the web. So it requires some knowledge of web development and I have the hosted, I set everything up myself and, and all of that stuff is, is technical skill. While it is a WordPress site and you know, it doesn't really require any coding knowledge, it still, I think, falls in, into the same category that it would if, if you learned how to code because it is something that would come easier to you if you understand how to set up a website and all that stuff. And my YouTube channel it has been pretty much all about programming until I went through my midlife crisis a few months ago and started talking about all kinds of different stuff. Most of the content on this channel has been about programming and it has made me money. But if you wanna use your coding experience to make money by creating content, then I just wanna say that after two years of uploading on YouTube, and now I'm currently like trying to build up my Instagram a little bit and I'm trying to build up my Twitter a little bit and I'm, I'm really like going further and further down the rabbit hole of content creation. I am starting to realize that yes, it is possible to make money with content and if you know how to code or if you're learning how to code you can document your journey you, you can create tutorials you can sell courses you can write books you can do so much stuff with the knowledge that you have from coding and it can make you money but man it's a grind it's it's a grind just like everything else i've mentioned in this video and, and really that's the main point i'm trying to get across in this video all the things that can make you money with learning how to code won't come easy. No matter how many videos you see that say easy, fun, exciting ways of making money with programming, blah, blah, blah. There's always gonna be somebody out there that's trying to sell you something, that's trying to get you to click on their video, that's trying to get a view so they can get some ad revenue. I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm making money off this video, right? But I'm trying to be honest and I'm trying to let people know that none of this stuff is gonna be as easy as a lot of people try to make it seem. It's a grind and it's a lot of work, but it's worth it and it's doable. And if you take anything from this video, just know that if you put in the work and if you put in the time, you can make money from all of these things that I mentioned. But none of it's gonna be fast, none of it's gonna be easy. It's not really gonna be exciting either. And when the grind starts and when you wanna continue down the path because you're determined to do it, you could eventually make money from it one day. All right, with all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.